بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اما بعد فان اصدق الحديث كتاب الله واحسن الهدى هدى محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور محدثاتها وكل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار أما بعد السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته <coughs> So inshallah we'll continue from where we left off last week and um, that was uh, we finished off the definitions of, of disbelief its meanings, its types, and its definitions. And inshallah, today we will continue from where uh, the Shaykh will uh, discuss <clears throat> uh, hypocrisy, um, its definition and its types, its definition and its types. So inshallah, we'll cover this topic today, ta'ala, from the book Kitab al Tawheed. <clears throat> so the Shaykh begins with his definition, he says, Ta'rifuhu. نفاق لغة مصدر نافق يقال نافق ينافق نفاق ومنافقة وهو مأخوذ من النفقاء أحد مخارج اليربو من جحله فإنه إذا طلب من واحد حرب إلى الآخر وخرج منه وقيل هو من النفق وهو السرب الذي يستطير به so then this is just, the Shaykh mentions a linguistic uh, definition, first of all, for hypocrisy. And he, there's two things he mentions here. He says, he mentions a verb first, and that's more for uh, Arabic speakers really, but he mentions a verb that the word nifaq comes from. And then he mentions that it's taken from the word nufaqa, and mentions nufaqa as well, which is related to nifaq. And he says it's um, it's like a rodent that comes out of its hole. So it's in reference to a rodent that comes out from its hole. Or the things, or uh, a thing that comes out of one of these rodents from its hole. He also mentions another meaning as well is to do with uh, a tunnel as well. That it can mean like being in a tunnel. And he says that, for example, a tunnel or a space such as a tunnel. Um, that uh, things are hidden in or you go into or people hide in a tunnel for example that's a linguistic um, yeah for the word nafaqa this word um, or nafaqa from the Arabic then he goes on to say in terms of the uh, the legal meaning or in the sharia in uh, the, the religious meaning he says amma nifaqu fi shari'i so he says here, he says within the religious meaning of the word nifaq, he says then it means uh, openly displaying Islam while in your heart you are, um, you possess within your heart disbelief and evil. So you're out, uh, outwardly showing Islam and all that is good, but deep down inside you, you uh, you have disbelief and evil within you. Yeah, and as we all know, uh, that meaning we're all familiar with. The Shaykh goes on to say, سُمِيَ بِذَلِكَ لِأَنَّهُ يَدْخُلُوا فِي الشَّرْعِ مِنْ بَابِ وَيَخْرُجُ مِنْهُ مِنْ بَابِ آخر. And the Shaykh says it's, it's called that or it was named this Nifaq's hypocrisy is named as such because it enters so the person he enters in the deen from one door so to speak and he leaves from another door meaning that the person is showing his deen outwardly to the people but inwardly is a complete opposite as in is upon disbelief and evil the shaykh goes on to say wa'ala dhalika so 
So if we go to this ayah, the meaning of it from Surah Tawbah verse um, 67, let's have a look. If we go to the meanings, verse 67, and see what's being said here. Towards the end of this ayah, Verily the hypocrites are the fasikun, i.e. rebellious, disobedient to Allah. So Allah has made it clear about these uh, hypocrites from what they are. Then the shaykh mentions another ayah. He says here that he says, "Ay al kharijuna min al sharr, wa jaal Allahu al munafiqina sharran min al kafirina." فقال. So the shaykh says, "I what does this ayah mean that we just read?" He says, "I you know that they exit. They're not within the uh, uh, you know religious term of being a Muslim. They're actually outside of that." Outside of the <coughs> the operating outside <coughs> of the deen or the Sharia of Allah, and then the Sheikh mentions that Allah made the munafikin these hypocrites that that they are, they are evil and they are disbelievers. That's what they're upon. That's what they're about. And the Sheikh mentions an ayah, another ayah here from the Quran, the verse Quran: "In al munafikina fi darqil asfali min al nar." And that's from verse 145 of Surah An-Nisa. And if we go there and have a look at the meanings, then it means verily the hypocrites will be in the lowest depths of the fire. No helper will you find for them. So these hypocrites, they'll be in the worst, in the worst part, parts of, the hell, of hell, even worse than the disbelievers. And the Sheikh will explain this later on, inshallah. <clears throat> then the Sheikh mentions another ayah or a few ayahs from uh, Surah Al Baqarah, where he quotes, يخادعون الله والذين آمنوا وما يخدعون إلا أنفسهم وما يشعرون في قلوبهم مرض فزادهم الله مرضا ولهم عذاب عليم بما كانوا يكذبون. So the meaning of these ayahs that we just read from Surah Al-Baqarah, if we go to them, verse 9 and 10, where Allah says, They think to deceive Allah and those who believe, while they only deceive themselves and perceive it not. In their hearts is a disease of doubt and hypocrisy, and Allah has increased their disease. A painful torment is theirs because they used to tell lies. So this is about the munafiqeen. The hypocrites. The Shaykh then moves on and he says, he mentions the types, so he'll discuss the types of hypocrisy and wa on nifaq. The Shaykh he goes on to say, and nifaq will know an, and know all over, and nifaq al itikadi. Wahu al nifaq al akbar al ladi yadhar sahibahu al islam, yudhir sahibahu al islam, wa yubtin al kufr. So then the Shaykh says there are two types of hypocrisy. He says the first type of hypocrisy is what is known as in Arabic and nifaqul itikadi, and that is the hypocrisy of belief. And the Shaykh says that this hypocrisy it is also known as uh, the uh, um nifaqul akbar, the greater hypocrisy. Um, and he mentions that this is where the person. He portrays and makes it apparent on the outside that he is a person of Islam. He's a Muslim. You can see, you can see him. He's a Muslim. You can see all the signs that you need to see that, or you're assured that this person is a Muslim. But he hides disbelief and hypocrisy inside him, in his heart. And the Sheikh says, "Wa the no mukhrij min al bi kulliya." And the Sheikh says that this type of hypocrisy, this one. The major hypocrisy, then this hypocrisy, whoever has it, they take him out of the fold of Islam in totality and completeness. And he says, And as we, uh, when we quoted the um, ayah from Surah Baqarah, that, <coughs> that this person, these types of hypocrites will be in the lowest levels and the depths of the hellfire, as in the worst parts of the hellfire, because of their major hypocrisy that's with them. So then the Shaykh goes up to say, I'll read the rest in Arabic, then I'll translate it, inshallah. 
So then the Shaykh, he says, وَقَدْ وَصَفَ اللَّهُ أَهْلَهُ بِصِفَاتِ الشَّرِّ كُلِّهَا مِنَ الْكُفْرِ وَعَدْمَ الْإِيمَانِ وَالْإِسْتِهْزَاءِ بِالْدِّينِ وَأَهْلِهِ وَسُخْرِيَةِ مِنْهُمْ وَالْمَيْلِ بِالْكُلِّيَةِ إِلَىٰ عَدَاءِ دِينِ لِمُشَارَكَتِهِمْ لَهُمْ فِي عَدَاوَةِ الْإِسْلَامِ وَهَاؤُلَاءِ مَوْجُودُونَ فِي كُلِّ زَمَانٍ وَلَا سِيَّمَا إِنْدَمَا تُظْهِرْ قُوَّةُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَإِنْدَمَا تَظْهَرُ قُوَّةُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَلَا قُوَّةُ الْإِسْلَامِ وَلَا يَسْتَطِيعُونَ مُقَاوَمَتَهُ فِي الظَّاهِرِ فَإِنَّهُمْ يُظْهِرُونَ الدُّخُولَ فِيهِ لِأَجْلِ الْكَيْدِ لَهُ وَلِأَهْلِهِ فِي الْبَاطِنِ وَلِأَجْلِ أَنْ يَعِيشُوا مَعَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ وَيَأْمَنُوا عَلَى دِمَائِهِمْ وَأَمْوَالِهِمْ فَيَظْهَرُ النِّفَاقُ إِيمَانُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ أَنْ فَيَظْهَرُ الْمُنَافِقُ إِيمَانَهُ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرِ وَهُوَ فِي الْبَاطِنِ مُنْصَلِقٌ مِنْ ذَلِكَ كُلِّهِ مُكَذِّبٌ بِهِ لَا يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ تَكَلَّمَ بِكَلَامٍ أَنْزَلَهُ وَلَا بِشَرٍّ وَجَعَلَهُ رَسُولًا لِلنَّاسِ يَهْدِيهِمْ بِإِذْنِهِ وَيُنْذِرُهُمْ بَأْسَهُ وَيُخَوِّفُهُمْ إِخَابَةً وَقَدْ حَتَقَ اللَّهُ أَسْتَارَ هَؤُلَاءِ الْمُنَافِقِينَ وَكَشَفَ أَسْرَارِهِمْ فِي الْقُرْآنِ الْكَرِيمِ وَجَلَّ لِعِبَادِهِ أُمُورَهُمْ لِيَكُونُوا مِنْهَا وَمِنْ أَهْلِهَا عَلَى حَظْرٍ وَذَكَرَ تَوَائِفُ الْعَالِمِ الثَّلَاثَةَ فِي أَوَّلِ الْبَقَرَةِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَالْكُفَّارَ وَالْمُنَافِقِينَ فَذَكَرَ فِي الْمُؤْمِنِينَ أَرْبَعَ آيَاتٍ وَفِي الْكُفَّارِ آيَتَيْنِ وفي المنافقين ثلاث عشرة آية لكثرتهم وأموم الابتلاء بهم وشدة فتنتهم على الإسلام وأهله فإن, فإن بلية, بلية الإسلام بهم شديدة جدا لأنهم منسوبون إليه وإلى نصرته وموالات وموالاته وهم أعداؤه في الحقيقة يخرجون عداوتهم في كل قالب يظن الجاهل أنه علم وإصلاح وهو غاية الجحد والإفساد So in this in these paragraphs that we read the Shaykh he says that uh, these uh, munafiks then Allah described them to us Allah described their traits their characteristics to us the evil that they are upon and they hold and that they carry with them uh, of disbelief and uh, lack of belief and lack of iman and that they um, joke and jest uh, of the deen they make jest and joke of the deen and his people they you know mock the deen and his people and in reality they are far away fully and far away uh, from the deen and they they help and aid the uh, the enemies of Islam, and they have this um, hate for Islam. And the Sheikh says that these hypocrites, they will they they'll appear in every time and place. They'll be in every time and place. They're always there. The group of them are always there. Especially the Sheikh mentions this important point is especially. So, when the strength of Islam shows, you'll, you'll see more of them. When the strength of Islam shows and the strength of Islam is present, there'll be more of these people, more of these hypocrites. There'll be, when, when the enemies of Islam are not able to resist yeah, and, and to cause trouble and destruction uh, to the Muslims, and they're not able to do any of this and have no power against Islam, then they will enter, these hypocrites will enter in the name of Islam in order to weaken Islam within. And they'll plot and plan and do all these kinds of things as we're all aware of about hypocritical actions and what they will do in the name of Islam. But really they'll, they'll be showing Islam on the outside, but they'll be plotting and planning against the Muslims at the same time. And so they'll, live, they'll become Muslims, for example, or they'll portray their Islam uh, they live to, in order to live with the Muslims, amongst the Muslims, between the Muslims and amongst them, in order to um, weaken them, 
you know, in order to take them, you know, you know, in order to have them kill, you know, their blood or take their wealth, etc. So the Sheikh says that in Nifaq, this hypocrisy, these hypocrites, they will, the hypocrite will show his belief in Allah and in the angels and in the books and in the messengers and in the final day. But inside, in but inside, within them, in their hearts, they will be far from it and far and departed from what they show on the outside. So it will be opposite on the inside. There will be disbelief and evil and hate towards the Muslims in its totality. And the Sheikh says, they, uh, in, inwardly in their hearts, they don't believe in Allah and they don't believe in any of the message or anything. And they are there, the enemies of Islam. This is what the Sheikh mentions here. And, you know, they don't fear Allah as he should be feared. They don't care. They're there to cause trouble for the Muslims. And the Sheikh says that Allah here, where the, the Sheikh says that Allah exposed their, their secrets and, and about them, exposed them, exposed the hypocrites. And Allah exposed and, and clarified to us and showed us their secrets and what they're about in the Noble Quran. And Allah made it clear for his servants their affairs and what they're upon and what they do so that we can be um, we can be upon knowledge about them and be aware and have that on, on the forefront of our minds. And Allah mentioned the, the three types of groups, should we say groups in Surah Al-Baqarah. Allah mentioned the believers and he mentioned the disbelievers and he mentioned the hypocrites. These are the three groups of people. So with regards to the believers, Allah mentioned the believers in Surah Al-Baqarah. He mentioned the believers in four, in four verses. And the, he mentioned the, uh, the disbelievers in two verses. And he mentioned the hypocrites in 13 verses. That's way more than any of the other, the other two groups. Way more. Why? The Sheikh says because of the sheer numbers of them. As in their, the, the, uh, in their numbers, the numbers of them. There's many of them, the, sh the sheer amount of them. And, <coughs> and the trials and tribulations that they come with. And the severe trials and tribulations that they come with. And the people of Islam, the Muslims are tested with because of them. So the Sheikh mentions that because by way of these hypocrites, the, the Muslims are tested and trialed way more than if it was just a disbeliever. The hypocrites carry far more trial and tribulation and problems for the Muslims. Because why? The Sheikh says because they, are, they, they attribute themselves and link themselves to Islam. And for the most part, they show Islam on the outside, so it's hard to tell. You know, if a person's a hypocrite or not. And inside they hold disbelief, uh, clear disbelief and hate for Islam. And they want evil for Islam. And they aid the enemies of Islam, of course, within. And their hate, and their, their hate for the Muslims, it comes out on every angle, every corner, it's there. Every opportunity that arises, they, they will be looking to cause problems for the Muslims. And the ignorant thinks that, oh, this is knowledge and this is a rectification. But in essence, it's ignorance and corruption. So this is what the Sheikh mentions about them. He goes on to say, as well here, he says, He says, and this hypocrisy, is of six types. So let's see what he says, inshallah, what the Shaykh Abdullah, may Allah preserve him, says, he says it's of six types. He says, one, takdeeb al Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So, the hypocrisy, the first type, is to lie about the Prophet, so they, to lie about the Prophet, to make lies up, to try and falsify, and try to make him as if he's a false Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. That's the first thing, that, that's the first point. Number two, takdeeb ba uh, 
the second type is um, basically trying to falsify. This is what they do: falsifying and try to falsify some of that which the Prophet Sallallahu came with. Yeah, try to nullify and falsify it by saying it's a lie and this and that, whatever they they come with. Number three. Both the Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Number three They have hate They have hatred for the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Number four Bughdu ba'di ma ja'a bihi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Hatred for some of that which the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam came with Number five Al-Masarra Bin Khifadi Deen al Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam So they are pleased and they get happy when the deen of the messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, the deen of al-Islam, our deen, um, is weakened in various ways. It, 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 it pleases them. It makes them happy. And number six, al-karahiyatu al-intisari deen of Rasul sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And number six, and the final point here that the Sheikh mentions, hate. Hatred and hate uh, for the uh, for aiding the deen of the messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Hate for aiding the religion of Islam and helping the religion of Islam and supporting the religion of Islam. So this is what makes up a hypocrite. These are the things that that they hold in their heart, the belief that they have. <clears throat> the Sheikh goes on to say. The second type of hypocrisy. So that's the first type of hypocrisy covered here. The Sheikh says, and no Othani, the second type, and Nifakul Amali, hypocrisy in action. So the first type was hypocrisy in belief, what the hypocrite believes. This is now hypocrisy of actions, what actions are done, as in the physical actions. The Sheikh says, Wahua Amalu Shay in. من أعمال المنافقين مع بقاء الإيمان في القلب وهذا لا يخرج من الملة لكنه وسيلة إلى ذلك وصاحبه يكون فيه إيمان ونفاق وإذا كثر صار بسببه منافقا خالصا والدليل عليه والدليل عليه قوله صلى الله عليه وسلم أربع من كن فيه كان منافقا خالصا ومن كانت فيه خصلة منهن كانت فيه خصلة من النفاق حتى يدع حتى يدعها إذا أؤتمن خان وإذا هدث كذب وإذا عهد غدر وإذا خاسم فجر. so the sheikh says in this paragraph um, that the second type of Hypocrisy is to do with actions, how you go about your, how one goes about their daily lives, as in the actions that they they do, they perform, and he says it's doing something from, uh, it's a it's an action from the actions or deeds of the hypocrites, um, with their iman remaining within the hearts. So th this type of person still has iman within the heart. But his actions have hypocrisy or en uh, encompass hypocrisy. They have hypocrisy within them. The Sheikh says that this kind of hypocrisy, then it doesn't take the person out of the fold of Islam. However, it is a way or a path to leaving the fold of Islam if it isn't dealt with and fixed. So the Sheikh says that the person who harbors this kind of hypocrisy in action, he in him is he has belief in him, he has iman within him, but he also has hypocrisy within him. So the Sheikh says, if the hypocrisy increases within him, like it tips the the you know the balances and it increases, as in the hypocrisy increases within him, then this will be the reason for this person turning into a pure hypocrite, as in the first category. Which will then take him out of the fold of Islam, and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, and the Sheikh says that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam uh, says here, and this is the evidence for uh, what the Sheikh has said, and the evidence is the Hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, where we just read this in Arabic with the uh, meaning 
that where the Prophet Sallallahu talked about four types of people or four characteristics and he said that he said four are the qualities or four qualities or characteristics which when found in a person make him a hypocrite a clear hypocrite and one who possesses one of them possesses one characteristic of hypocrisy until he abandons it or leaves it these are when he is entrusted with something he betrays his trust when he speaks he lies when he promises he acts treacherously as in he breaks his promises and when he argues he be behaves in a uh, immoral way like imprudent insulting manner so these are the characteristics of the hypocrites and as 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 we've heard that in the hadith of the prophet sallam it's clear so then the shaykh goes on to say so the Sikh says, so if all of these four qualities, I uh, won't call them qualities, let's say, if any of these four evil characteristics are found in, um, in a person, then evil is found within this person. And, and, and these four characteristics, if they are found in a person, then it's made clear that this person is a hypocrite. And whoever has one of these four characteristics, evil characteristics, then he has a characteristic of hypocrisy within him, but he's not a hypocrite like that of the one who has all four of them within him, because that's a pure hypocrite, full on, 100% bona fide. Then the Sheikh says, فإنه قد يجتمع في العبد خصال خير وخصال شر وخصال إيمان وخصال كفر ونفاق ويستحق من الثواب والإقاب بحسب ما قام به من موجبات ذلك ومنه التكاسل عن الصلاة مع الجماعة في المسجد فإنه من صفات المنافقين فالنفاق شر وخطير جدا وكان وكان الصحابة يتخوفون من الوقوع فيه قال قال ابن أبي مليك أدركت ثلاثين من أصحاب رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم كلهم يخاف النفاق على نفسه. سيدنا الشيخ يقولون to say that he says that that we that we that these characteristics can be found in in, in the slave of Allah and as we know in the, in, the, in the servant of Allah or in a person you know you, you'll find good with you know sometimes you'll find good within them you'll find characteristics of evil within them you'll find characteristics um, of iman and belief within them and likewise a disbelief and hypocrisy and so obviously from that the, depending on what the person does they deserve either reward or punishment depending on what they do from their actions and what they believe. And the Shaykh says, and he says, for example, he gives us an example, he says, um, uh, uh, for example, laziness. And from these characteristics of hypocrisy as well are laziness uh, in attending the uh, congregational prayer. And he says that in, in the masjid, and he says that these are one of the characteristics of the hypocrites. And he says that hypocrisy, it is evil and it is a very dangerous matter. And he gives an example from the Sahaba, how they were. And this is the Sahaba, by the way. And he mentions, he says, that the Sahaba, they, was, they feared falling into hypocrisy. And uh, Ibn Abi Mulaika, he, he said that I, I, I was aware, he said, I was aware of 30 of the 30 companions of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam all of them feared hypocrisy upon themselves and falling into it and this is how they were yeah they, they took their religion seriously then the shaykh moves on he says al faruku bayn al nifaqi al akbar wa nifaq al asgar so this is just the last part of the lesson we nearly finished Another five minutes or so and we should be done, inshallah. So this is a summary of what we've gone through today. The Shaykh will explain. He says, the differences between 
the greater hypocrisy and the lesser hypocrisy, the two types of hypocrisy that he discussed. And we have, looks like four points here. So, okay, so he says, the first point, أَنَّ نِفَاقَ الْأَكْبَرْ يَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ وَنِفَاقَ الْأَصْغَرْ لَا يَخْرُجُ مِنَ الْمِلَّةِ So we know this, the shaykhs, uh, as he mentioned earlier, the greater hypocrisy takes uh, one out of the fold of Islam and the lesser hypocrisy does not take the person out of the fold of Islam. Point two, أَنَّ النِفَاقَ الْأَكْبَرْ اِخْتِلَافَ السِّرْ وَالْعَلَانِيَ فِي الْإِعْتِقَادِ وَالْنِفَاقَ الْأَصْغَرْ اِخْتِلَافَ السِّرْ وَالْعَلَانِيَ فِي الْأَعْمَالِ دُونَ الْإِعْتِقَادِ So, then looking at the belief, so we know that the greater um, hypocrisy is to do with um, hiding disbelief and outwardly showing um, uh, belief in Islam, whereas the lesser uh, hypocrisy is a, it's, it's related to the actions that the person does and is not connected to uh, the belief. It's actually just the actions. Point three, the Shaykh says, أن النفاق الأكبر لا يستر من مؤمن وأما النفاق الأصغر فقد يستر من المؤمن. He says here that uh, the greater hypocrisy um, does not show on a believer. Is, you won't find it in a believer. You won't find that in a believer. However, um, the lesser hypocrisy can be found within a believer. Point four, أن النفاق الأكبر في الغالب لا يتوب صاحبه ولو تاب فقد اختلف في قبول في قبول توبته عند الحاكم بخلاف النفاق الأصغر فإن صاحب فإن صاحبه قد يتوب إلى الله فيتوب الله فيتوب الله عليه. So we'll break this down step by step. So point four, this is a long point, so we'll, we'll go step by step. That the Sheikh mentions that the greater hypocrisy. He says, most of the time, the person who is upon this greater hypocrisy does not uh, repent from it. The person who is upon it does not repent from it most of the time. And even if he um, uh, repented from his hypocrisy, his major hypocrisy that he's upon, then the Sheikh says that the scholars, the people of knowledge, um, have differed in whether the the hypocrite, uh, hypocrite's repentance is accepted or not. The major, the major hypocrite. Um, the Sheikh says, in contrary to the uh, the uh, lesser hypocrisy, then if a person's upon lesser hypocrisy, then if he repents from it, then is accepted from it, and Allah, uh, you know, forgives him. Then the Sheikh mentions Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah. رحمه الله يسيس قال شيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية وكثيرا ما تعرض للمؤمن شعبة من شعب النفاق ثم يتوب الله عليه وقد يرد على, قلب على قلبه بعد ما يوجب النفاق ويدفع الله عنه والمؤمن يبتلى بوساوس الشيطان وبوساوس الكفر التي يديق بها صدره كما قال الصحابة يا رسول الله إن أحد إن أحدنا لا يجد لا يجد في نفسه ما لا إن يخر من السماء إلى الأرض أحب إليه من أن يتكلم به فقال ذلك صريح الإيمان وفي رواية ما يتعاظم أن يتكلم به قال الحمد لله الذي رد كيده إلى الوسوسة أي حصول هذا الوساوس وسواس مع هذه الكراهة العظيمة ودفعه عن القلب وهو من صريح الإيمان انتهى. سيدنا الشيخ فوتس الشيخ الإسلام ابن تيمية رحم الله ما يقول ما الله مسي upon him and he mentions that he said about uh, this topic of hypocrisy he says many uh, uh, what is shown what is presented to the believer in terms of um, um, these various points with regards to um, uh, hypocrisy and, and then you know he in, in, from from for example uh, the whispers of the shaitan again that was was about certain doubts that related to hypocrisy and other things and then the person you know he, you know depends to Allah you know when he has these when he hears this he depends to Allah 
and and he repels these um, um, uh, whispers of the shaitan. Obviously, he's forgiven. And we know that the believer, the Sheikh says here, the uh, Sheikh, Sheikh, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah, he mentions here that the believer is obviously trialed and tested by these whispers of the shaitan. Uh, with these uh, waswas, these different types of disbelief and hypocrisy and all sorts of other things. And, you know, when when any of that happens to us, when we find ourselves in that situation, you know, our chest kind of close up and become tight upon us and heavy. And we try to repel that away. And we do our best to repel that away, you know, and ask Allah's forgiveness. And the Sheikh says, and, uh, and then he mentions here, um, uh, regarding the Sahaba, that they said, Ya Rasulullah, O oh, oh Messenger of Allah, uh, verily uh, one of us finds himself, uh, finds himself that he'd rather fall from the sky uh, to the earth, land on, from the sky to the earth, than, uh, than mention what uh, these whispers are being said to them, rather than mentioning what's being, you know, uh, whispered to them within their hearts. And then, you know, the Prophet ﷺ replied that that is the manifest iman, that that's the person's iman. You know, that's that's showing your iman. That when you repel these evil uh, whispers, or whether they be of hypocrisy, different doubts, uh, disbelief, that when you repel them or push them away, yeah, and you're on this kind of uh, methodology, then that shows the, the clearness and uh, manifestness of your belief, your iman in Allah. And the Sheikh mentions uh, an example as, as that as well, uh, another one similar to that <coughs> as well, but the point being the one that's been mentioned. Then the Sheikh goes on to say, وَأَمَّا أَهْلُ النِّفَاقِ الْأَكْبَرِ فَقَالَ اللَّهُ فِيهِمْ سُمٌّ بُقْمٌ أُمْيٌ فَهُمْ لَا يَرْجِمُونَ Then Allah, uh, then, uh, then the Sheikh mentions uh, that about the hypocrites, the, 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 the major hypocrites upon major hypocrisy. Then he says, as for them, then Allah has told us about them. And if we look at the meanings of, of this ayah from the Quran, from Surah Al-Baqarah, um, verse 18, then we'll see what Allah said about them. They are deaf, dumb, and blind, so they re they will not return to the right path. Yeah, that's them. And then the Shaykh goes on to say, Ay ilal Islam fil batin, that they won't return to the right path, i.e. Islam, the religion of Islam, within their hearts. Because as we know, the major hypocrites, the, on the outside, they show it, don't they? That they're Muslim. But on the inside, they're not. Their hearts have not submitted to the deen, uh, to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then the Shaykh says, وَقَالَ تَعَالَ فِيهِمْ أَوَلَا يَرَوْنَ أَنَّهُمْ يُفْتَنُونَ فِي كُلِّ آمٍ مَرَّةً أَوْ مَرَّتَيْنِ ثُمَّ لَا يَتُوبُونَ, لا يتوبون وَلَا هُمْ يَذَّكَّرُونَ Surah so Tawbah 126. So let's have a look at that as well. The meanings of the verse mentioned there. See, they not see they not that they are tried once or twice every year with different kinds of calamities, disease, famine, etc. Yet they turn not in repentance, nor do they learn a lesson from it. This is about these major hypocrites. Allah's telling us about them, their their situation. Then the Sheikh mentions uh, Sheikh Al Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and he says, وَقَدْ اِخْتَلَفَ الْعُلَمَاءَ فِي قُبُولُ تَوْبَتِهِمْ فِي الظَّاهِرِ لِكَوْنِ ذَلِكَ لَا يُؤْلَمْ إِذْ هُمْ دَائِمًا يُدْهَرُونَ الْإِسْلَامِ So then, this difference that was mentioned earlier uh, with regards to is the major hypocrites um, repentance accepted or not? And the reason why the uh, uh, some of the scholars differed in whether it's accepted or not is because uh, you, are we sure? Is one sure or uh, can be convinced that uh, the person is truly uh, showing their Islam or are they still upon the hypocrisy and showing Islam on the outside and hiding disbelief on the inside? This is one of the reasons why. So the Sheikh uh, finishes um, uh, that um, section uh, with uh, this uh, final uh, uh, discussion from uh, Sheikh Al-Islam Ibn Taymiyyah and what he mentioned of the of why the repentance may not be accepted by some old man, their view, the whole, they hold that view, and this is the reason. So inshallah we'll stop there, and we'll continue next week, uh, where the Shaykh will discuss ignorance and jahiliyyah. So we'll cover that next week, bilna ta'ala. Subhanatullah, wa bihamdik, wa shudu wa la ilaha 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 il
وصلى الله وسلم على نبينا محمد وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين السلام عليكم ورحمه الله وبركاته